What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2023 Topps Chrome Hobby, two case break, 24 boxes. Pikachu number two, just sold out. This is a dual case break. And let's get this rolling. So I'm gonna kind of turn this over here this way so you guys can see me rip over here. Here's everybody in the break. Yeah, that could be something like that. That that that'll work. Just kind of merge those two big conferences together. More competitive, but who cares, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a good program, you're gonna win, right? I mean, improve you can win. So even if it's more competitive, I mean, it's like the SEC, obviously. It's been really good, Chad. I've been really eager to break some of that Breakers Delight. We just couldn't break it here yesterday because we were obviously just so busy with everything else. And we wanted to debut it at the National for the YouTube side. But Personals did like three, four cases at Breakers Delight. It's very loaded. It's a little bit pricier. It's probably just as much, if not a little bit more, than the Jumbo Edition. But obviously, you get rid of all the base cards and kind of just skips all the fun stuff. And uh, like I said, they're pretty loaded stuff, but... Jumbo's been great. I had a very, very, very good Jumbo case last night. I had a nice Volpe color. Then I got an Adley Rutschman auto, Yoshida auto. Uh, I got, um, who else did I get? I got the James Altman blue. I ended up getting, uh, I ended up getting like five, six big rookies. And that was like the most loaded case I see. I don't know, Mike. I love that it's called Breaker's Delight because it's basically a Breaker's Delight. Like, that is a specifically Breaker's product, you know? Get rid of the long, heavy base stuff. Just get right to the to the nice little short, sweet stuff, right? And, and uh, oh yeah, I've hit a couple Jordan Walkers. Yeah, I hit a nice purple speckle and then a couple base ones, I think. I was calling it Turkish Delights yesterday. But yeah, no, I, I'm pretty excited to break some of that Breakers Delight. We're almost in the teens for that. Yeah, I ended up pulling a Taco Fracker in my first case yesterday. It was Jose Siri. I pulled a Sub-Zero negative. I got a negative four of uh, Matt Olson, I think, as well. So yeah, we've, we've hit some really nice stuff here, but I'm just kind of kind of excited to break some of that Breakers Delight. I have a few cases, guys, so obviously, the quicker we can sell out that Breakers Delight here, the more I can post, but obviously, like I said, I am sharing a little bit with IG, so I do have for sure at least two cases for us, but if we can sell it out faster, I can always take more. Yeah, I did take a picture of that. Uh, yes, sir, JJ. This is a double dual case number two. I just started the box ripping. They didn't have good lighting here yesterday. I gotta start taking photos this way because the photos facing down were much better. But yeah, this is what the Sub Zero kind of looked like. Let me see if I can brighten it up a little bit. So, kind of looks like that. And then the numbering was negative four of zero. Hopefully, we just pull one here so you guys can just see it. But. It was really, really nice. I got a Julio short print yesterday too. That was cool. Matt McNeil says, you, I think the Walker is the mystery auto in finest. Could be. That could be the case. So it just goes to negative five. So the Taco Fractor is out of five. So are the, the, the uh, Sub-Zero ones. They're just to negative five, basically. So in reality, I got like number four of five, basically. Yes, and obviously for you guys that maybe potentially buy the Angels, 
you know, maybe by the Braves or even the Dodgers, maybe. Obviously, you never know. Freddie Freeman from Mookie Best are having a good year. Uh, keep those base cards, any colors of potential MVPs in your guys' eyes because they are having the MVP buyback again program this year. So I'm sure once that announced, you can come to your local car shop and trade it in for some money. So that should be fun. Anybody see Shohei Otani's performance today? Had his first complete game, right? And then in the second uh, game of the doubleheader, hit two home runs tonight. His lower back was kind of hurting after that second home run. And I'm like, bro, it's just because he's carrying the team on his back, right? Carrying the team on his back. Just give that guy a break. All right, so I'm probably going to rip the first six boxes, guys, and then we'll go through them. And we'll rip the next six, and then we'll go into case number two. But again, guys, obviously, like I said, we still have another dual caser that we can sell out today, too. That one is down to like two left now, I think, or three left. So if you guys want to run back to the next caser, we definitely can. I know we'll definitely do at least one more jumble today. We'll do a Breakers Delight today. So obviously, like I said, uh, continue to get those orders in, guys. So if you're just joining us, guys, I'm just starting the Pack Stack Rip uh, Dual Caser Hobby Edition number two. So. Down a little bit. Pickleball. What the hell am I watching right now? Let's go to NFL Live. <laughs> how about Sean Payton? Yes, uh, I know this is not baseball early, but how about Sean Payton today or yesterday? Read that he was just going in on how bad the Broncos coaching staff was last year. <laughs> Well, you would probably assume he's a little tired, Justin. That's probably why, right? I mean, yes, he's technically not pitching, but I mean, obviously playing two games in one in, in one game, and then and uh, or two games in a day, and then also having a you know pitch on top of that, a complete game too. It's pretty wild. I mean, I don't know. I just here it is right here. It says the offense. I don't know. Hack it. A lot of the people had dirt on their hands. It wasn't just Russell. He didn't just flip. He still has it. This is the BS that hit the wall. And he's just <laughs> I think the Broncos are going to be just fine, man, honestly. Russell, towards the end of the year, once Hackett was gone, sad to say, the team did play much better. And I don't know, maybe, maybe Russell Wilson's ego just got the best of him. You know, he was basically running things down there with Hackett. Remember they said he had his own like front parking spot like a coach, he had his own office, you know. I don't know, maybe that got the best of him. I think they'll be just fine, but it would be kind of funny though. I think it would be kind of funny though if they did. They did do pretty bad this year. I feel like it's gotten a lot worse over the years though, Chad. With Russ. I think Russ is a good guy though, right? I mean really. But I mean I don't know, maybe maybe having Sierra as your wife and her in the spotlight, you, you kinda of feel like you have to be in the spotlight, you're an NFL starting quarterback. I don't know. I kinda of like quarterbacks who are kinda of just out of the spotlight, really. Just to themselves. You know. Never liked Kirk Cousins much, but because but because of quarterback, sorry, uh, on Netflix, I I learned to kind of uh, to kind of uh, you know like him a little bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, we all we all remember that 
We all remember Russ's ex when he got drafted. Remember, she thought she hit the jackpot. <laughs> Just so crazy, crazy to switched up from from that to Sierra. You know what's funny, Chad? I was going to send you this message, but you know how we were talking about Burrow's injuries earlier? I guess you wouldn't count this as a football injury, but they were saying that legit, like, one year ago yesterday is when he had his uh, appendix removed, you know, when he had his appendicitis. So I was, I was trying to remember, I was like, didn't he miss some time in training camp last year due to something? But when you showed me that website, it, they didn't list the appendicitis because obviously it wasn't a football injury. But, uh... Yeah, Joe Burrow, man. I, like I said, I, I hope, I, I just, I just don't want them to rush that stuff because usually calf strains in most professional sports like start turning into Achilles, and that's the last thing we want for Joe Burrow because he's already had one major injury that's kept him out. I actually didn't really keep him out much long, but you know, serious one. But yeah, you know, it's it's. I seen the I seen the the play. I mean, it was just like a normal play, but you can tell obviously he was wearing that that calf sleeve, so obviously there was already discomfort. And I think obviously, you know, just uh, happened to be strained after that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, there you go, Chad. You jinxed it. <laughs> Yeah, hope, I'm glad they said calf strain because obviously the last thing you want to hear is Achilles and then I'd say it's over. But I, I think though, to be honest, I think their backup is is Trevor Simeon. Chad, is, is, that, is that correct? They better go out there and sign an actual real backup because obviously, you know, you hope Joe Burrow's healthy throughout the whole year, but you got to have a better backup than Trevor Simeon in case you're going to miss some time. And there's a lot of good quarterbacks still out there that can be a, a decent backup, probably. Jake Browning? He's the third stringer? But yeah, I think with with uh, with with Burrow's injury now, he's gonna be out for a few weeks. They're they're gonna have to pick up somebody and just be kind of realistic about it. Like, look, man, we're not gonna rush him back. Obviously, they say he should be fine for the regular season. Just probably will miss most of training camp. But I think you gotta have a, a legit backup ready to go in. Just in case. I mean, obviously, they're still going to give Simeon the, the bulk of the stuff because that's who they they feel like is their backup. But I don't think they wanted to. I don't, I don't think they thought he would have to go in really early into the season if that was the case. So they should go pick up. There's a lot of good quality quarterbacks still out there that are unsigned. I mean, I'd say I want to bring in like someone like Teddy Bridgewater, but I feel like he can come in for a few games if he had to. You know? There's, there's a lot of decent quarterbacks out there that have not been signed yet. Just don't go get Carson Wentz, Chad. <laughs> Tell the Bengals not to go get Carson Wentz. He is one of them. Oh, I think Carson Wentz wouldn't be a bad backup. He just has to accept that now. But I think Carson Wentz is also a backup. Man, that, I feel so bad for the guy. I love that dude at, at, at one point, like, And I defended him for a long time, man. But... Once he got to the Colts and it just didn't work out there, I just couldn't do it no more. And then I couldn't even do it even more when he actually took over the Commanders and then just couldn't do it there. But man, he did have a great 2017 season for us though. All right, here we go guys. First six boxes. Little Aaron Judge. Abby Rutschman Titans. 
And nice as Waldo Peraza to start us off for the Yankees. The Yankees is Tristan. We got Ezekiel Tovar to 350. And we got an Anthony Rizzo relic for the Yankees, more for Tristan and the Yanks. That is not numbered. A nice little hit there. Corbin Carroll, a little, uh, a little hyper. I think they still call it hyper in this too, right? Don't they? Wow, look at that. Anthony Volpe, what a Yankees box. Nice blue 70 out of 150. And I appreciate Anthony Volpe signing his whole name as well. There you go, Tristan. On the board already. Volpe hyper as well. That was a few days ago, man. Yeah, for sure. I, th I thought we talked about it. I'm sure Joe talked about it when he was here. I think that happened on, what, Tuesday? Oh, I think we might have been talking about it on Fanatics, actually. 61 out of 389. But yes, he did get released today, though, so that's a good thing. They did say that when he showed up to the hospital, he was conscious and able to, to you know, obviously move extremities and all that. So obviously, I mean, not to say that it wasn't a bad cardiac arrest, but obviously... You know, I think, uh, I don't think it was as probably crazy as like DeMar Hamlin in the sense. I think they obviously probably had to still bring him back, but, but yeah, I'm sure they're still probably testing and doing a lot, doing a lot of testing to figure out what's going on and why did that happen to, you know, potentially 19 year old kid, you know, the one thing that I was just always talking about on, on the stream on, on Fanatics we were talking about is that, you know, I, I personally think it's like a lot of these athletes that are coming up in sports now, I just feel like they they work their bodies so hard. Don't get me wrong, they're like at the peak of their fitness and physique and you know they're just such in great shape, but man, there you go, Freddie Freeman. Look at that, that's a case hit right there. And Chris, last ball mojo, ultraviolet all-stars. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that like, I feel like a lot of kids these days now have put their body through hell by just training so much playing so much basketball, let's say basketball, it's just travel ball, you know, just all the rec leagues, then, then you're going into high school leagues, like you're just putting so much stress on your body and your heart. And, you know, honestly, it's starting to become a thing where a lot of these younger athletes are starting to have problems early on in their life in that sense. But yes, this this is serious though, Rex, because I mean, I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, Sharif O'Neal, which is Shaq's son, he was supposed to go to UCLA and you know, be the next back thing right there. And he had some heart problems and I think I have to, had to have heart surgery and, you know, obviously kind of really ruined his, his basketball career. So this could be really serious. I mean, obviously if they find something now, if they don't find anything and they just say, you know, it just happened kind of, I mean, we can't really explain it, it just happened. Then, you know, obviously I think everything can somewhat go back to normal, but there's usually something, there's usually something wrong at, at that point to, to why did that happen, you know? Hopefully everything's okay, but it's definitely in jeopardy for sure. 
I mean, who knows when he'll be clear to, to play basketball again, you know? It's not like they're going to let him play basketball again next week, right? Francisco Lindor. Yeah, Hank Gathers, I think, was the guy out of LMU, right? In college. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, that, that's pretty scary, though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I can only imagine what, obviously, being a parent and having, like, LeBron and his wife, you know, having to get that call or even have to go through that. Nolan Jones. But right now, though, Rex, obviously, he's at USC. He's in college, so I'm sure, like I said, right now, that's really not on his mind in the sense that if he has to potentially stay another year, uh, you know, um, something like that in that case, well, then that's totally fine, obviously. He doesn't have to go to the NBA right after his freshman year, but... But yeah, I mean, hopefully there's nothing crazy. All right, so Nolan Jones. Adley. Bo Naylor. I'm not sure, but maybe, Justin? Jared Schuster. Out of 499. Both being Colburn Carroll. Did they say, speaking of like that kind of condition stuff, like with DeMar Hamlin, obviously his was kind of more of a freak accident getting hit like right in the chest and, you know, triggering that, but um, he's not playing this season, is he? Like, he's not in training camp and practice right now. Xander Bogart to 50. Honestly, Rex, I didn't even see the stream, actually. I uh, woke up a little late today. I got home super exhausted from breaking all the top from yesterday. But for some reason, my fe my bed felt so comfortable that it didn't make me fall asleep. I was just comfortable being on my phone, catching up with certain things. So I didn't really go to sleep till like three in the morning, actually. And I woke up like literally at 12. I showered and then got here to the shop around like one-ish. So I kind of missed what they broke. Alexis Diaz to 199. Casas. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. No, I heard about. Yeah. I, I know. I know. That's what. What we were told was going to happen with PWCC. That they were going to have like breaker stations per se, and everybody that's also like a PWCC, like you know, uh, like us. You know, we're kind of affiliated in that sense with the PWCC drop-off stuff. That uh, they were provide that, which I think is freaking awesome. No Cisco Lindor. I'll watch some videos later, though. I, I think we uploaded the video, so. Ronald Acuna Jr. Jacob DeGrom. Christopher Morale. And then there's the autograph, Shaylan Weirs. For the Oakland A's, Oakland A's team. Nice Adley Rutschman refractor. So we'll move these two over here, and then we'll rip the next six. No, actually, Rex Fanatics wasn't until Friday, actually. I think PWCC was always the thing on Thursday. But I believe the Friday Fanat uh, Fanatic stream got canceled for us. I believe originally we were supposed to be breaking, I think, Thursday and Friday. But now that we couldn't do Fanatics, 
we were gonna do another PWCC day on Saturday. And that one would be a little longer too than like an hour. But yeah, I think the Fanatics was always Friday. Yeah, I mean, I seen a lot of, Teddy did a lot of that yesterday. I just, obviously, like I said, we had too, so much Jumbo and Hobby here that we just didn't post it for that reason. Wanted to kind of get through Hobby and Jumbo as much as we could. But yeah, I have some cases here today, so I'm looking forward to finally breaking that, but it's awesome. It's, it's, that's a, oh wow, look at that, Corbin Carroll. My first Corbin Carroll, 347 out of 4.99, going to Sean Maddock. Nice. Um, it's, it's basically a breaker product, honestly. There you go, very nice. So this case so far, nice Volpe and a Corbin Carroll now refractor. Very nice. Nolan Gorman. I haven't been here today, Rex, yeah. Not tomorrow, today. Gunnar Henderson to 125. I probably could have broke some yesterday, but like I said, we just didn't post it because we had so much jumbo and chrome that was gonna go, a uh, jumbo and hobby that was gonna go off. So you guys can get some breakers to light here today, guys. I have a few cases. Um, and I think it's already down to like the teens, right? I think last time I checked, I think it's at 21 actually. Yeah. All right, here we go. We got Alexis Diaz to 350. Corbin Carroll. We're looking for one more auto here, guys. Nice, Edwin Diaz. For the Mets. So there you go. First uh, six hits here. We did I'm getting one of those case hits already. Corbin Carroll, Gunnar Henderson color, and then of course that Volpe color. So all in all guys, starting off the case pretty strong. Now let's rip the next six boxes and then we'll be officially done with the first case and then we can rip the next.
Hi, Darren. You got some uh, top chrome you're talking about? Or what are you talking about? Oh, uh, wax party, you mean, maybe? Or just personals you might have gotten. Awesome, man. Love me some Phoenix. Nice. Yeah, I think some people's wax party stuff was going out this week and obviously as you can see some people already got it some of the bigger bigger or not bigger customers per se but the customers that had like one cases and just like a ton of little stuff to put in big boxes i know some of that stuff just went out yesterday and the day before so i think some people will be getting a lot of their wax party stuff by the end of this week by the end of maybe the beginning of next week by the end of this week awesome man Congrats for getting some, some uh, wax party entries. A lot of nice stuff was given out in that promotion. And obviously I think whoever won the NT case obviously won't get that ship sealed until the product actually releases at some point next month. Frank, what's going on? Didn't get much in terms of huge hits on my boxes, but I did pull a Brock Purdy rookie auto out of Oh nice! I love rookies and stars, man. I, I always I always love the the nice little like uh chrome inserts in there, like the uh crusades and stuff like that. That's nice though, man. I mean Brock Purdy obviously seems like I think he's cleared for cleared for training camp now, right? So might not actually miss any time potentially.
Alrighty guys, two more boxes and then we'll go through the second half of the first case. So it looks like I'll be right on schedule with about an hour and a half. And I'm at the 36 minute mark. By the time I go through the hits, I'll probably be around the 45 minute mark and then we'll be kind of right on schedule. Speaking of Brock Purdy, Frank says Brock Purdy throws that first team practice since NFL Championship game injury. Alright, one more box, guys. So again, guys, obviously about another 45 minutes or so, a little bit over that, till we can do another break. But it seems like uh, still at three left in the Jumbo Edition, and now at two left in the next doubleheader. So again, still have plenty of time for another Jumbo, another doubleheader, Breakers Delight, anything you guys want, really. But like I said, obviously as the day goes by and you know, the only one that's really going to be time consuming potentially is going to be another double header. So, you know, if you guys like it, you want to run it back and kill that next double header case now, we could do that or kill it later tonight. So, like I said, I'll probably just need an hour and a half. So, if you guys want to do that third one, just got to sell up at like 9 30 or so, 9 45 latest maybe. So, we can break that tonight. Um, so, obviously, that's still like five hours away. So obviously, like I said, I, I think we have plenty of time to do another one of those, at least another jumbo or two, and then potentially, obviously, a couple of those breakers delight. And that breakers delight looks like it's at 18 now. So, like I said, that stuff is really nice. Gets rid of all the heavy base stuff. Just goes to the nice, you know, silvers or refractors, the colors, inserts. Then obviously two autographs per box. Continue on. Hunter Green at one fifty. Nick Prato. To 250. And he drew waters to 299 purple speckle for the Kansas City Royals going to Zachary. Thank you. 
Chet Titans, two out of 50 for the Blue Jays. Might go with that one. And then we got Anderson Espinosa for the Padres. That is at. for the Colorado Rockies. Gorman. Bo Naylor to 75. The Guardians. now. Titans. Negative Tyler Freeman for the Guardians. Mitch Hanniger for the Giants. Lewis with the Giants. Corbin Burns, just the base. A nice James Outman. 189 out of 199, guys. Look, yesterday, I would say the first four or five breaks, Dodgers, just not much. But last night, our last case, we had a nice blue Ray Wave Outman to 150. And now, look at that, the doubleheader, another Outman here, this time to 199 for the Dodgers. So, last ball mojo, Dodgers, Chris. You got yourself that Freddie Freeman, which is that ultraviolet case hit, and now you got a James Outman as well. I think pretty much those cards would easily pay for the spot, probably. I'm not sure how much those ultraviolets would go for, but I think Altman colors should go for at least, you know, 150 or so, a little over 100. So even just on that, more than half back. I think his base were like at 50 to 75, so 
Definitely not bad at all, man. And still have another whole case to work with. Like I said, maybe people were a little scared buying the Dodgers yesterday because weren't hitting much in the first couple of cases, but last two cases we've been hitting. We got MJ Melendez to 75. How rare are the taco fractors? They're out of fives, Justin, so yeah, they're pretty rare. I've only hit one of those so far in my first case, and that was it. I haven't seen one since. Hopefully you speak that into existence though for us and get one of those here. Negative Tyler Freeman, that's the second one. I didn't know they were numbered either until I looked at the checklist. I thought they would just be like short prints, but I guess they're even shorter than that. Out of five only. And Corey Lee. Or Houston. Here we go, last box of the first case, and then we can go on to the next case, guys. Kyle Stowers. Rasmussen. And Justin Steele for the Cubbies to four ninety nine. Cubs is Jeff Thompson. Ultraviolet, Corbin Carroll, Gunnar Henderson, and the James Altman. Gunnar Henderson was a numbered card, but still a nice one. All right, let's actually let's move this case over here. We'll rip this one open really quick. Like uh, dual caser number three is down to one left now. So again, hey, just might as well just get it out of the way and do the next one. Then that gives us a lot of free time to 
do, a, do some jumbos, do Breaker's Delight. Maybe we can do something else as well again. Maybe we can try some hit parade.
third box pretty much complete. Rip another couple here and then we can go through the next couple boxes. So again, this is still double header number two, second half case. Second case, I should say. Not second half, but second case. Let me guess. Is Dodgers still last by mojo number three? Yep, of course the Dodgers are. Dog, man, what's going on? All right, buddy. I think it's been a while. the Dodgers man always trying to improve right but yeah no I mean that that'd be that would be pretty sweet I mean I think the Cardinals are in a selling mode right now so maybe you might be able to get him for a decent deal but I love the Dodgers man obviously you know in recent years We've always been pretty good throughout the regular season, just hasn't been too successful during the postseason, but they're always a team that's looking to improve, man. You know? So, can't blame them for, for always wanting to uh, make these big splash deals. Nice. Baseball right now? Sweet. Potential trade rumors yesterday saying that Otani's off the block, and I don't know, man. They've been winning lately. You know, obviously I'm a Dodgers fan and don't want to see the Angels win a World Series, but just just for the love of Otani, I kind of want the Angels to make the playoffs and him do damage in the playoffs in the sense, right? You know. And then obviously next year, hop on over, take a little little Uber ride or a car ride down the five and come to Chavez Ravine, right? But, I mean, just for baseball, right? I mean, I just kind of want them to do good and it's just Otani to do good, really. And Trout, too, but... Yeah, they've been playing much better ball lately and obviously Otani, complete game today. Two-run home run in the second game. Dude's amazing, man. Yeah, they're letting it ride, and I think, like, I think Kev talked about it yesterday. You know, Japanese culture, you know, very, very loyal people. So, I mean, really, if you show them that, you know, obviously you want, you show them what, what, what they want, you know, obviously stay loyal. And I, I, have, a, I have a gut feeling he's going to, he's going to resign with the Angels, honestly. We're all getting all hyped up for nothing. 
And obviously, they, I think they just traded for Lucas Giolito, so they're trying to improve too. But, so obviously, a slight chance that he leaves, but I just feel like he's going to stay. Well, let me just leave this one up here, but nice Gunner Henderson right here, guys. Look at that. 27 out of 50. Technicolor. Go! Nice one there for the Orioles. Yeah, man, we were talking about that earlier. It's kind of scary, man. You know, hopefully it's nothing too serious. They don't find anything crazy. It just could have been one of those things that just happens naturally sometimes but I don't know it's a little scary man because like I said I, I I don't even know when he's going to be back on the basketball court you know especially if they don't especially if they find something but it's pretty serious man obviously a young kid at that age and his you know his like uh, athletic shape right I mean very fit athletic probably the best shape of his life right now just Dude, if they find something really wrong, it could. I mean, it seems like he is fine, though. He got discharged today, I heard, today in the morning. So, I don't know, man. It's it's very tricky situation. This isn't like an ACL or, you know, it's like nothing like that where, you know, obviously you have an operation and you're back on it, right? I mean, obviously you can have heart surgery, but even then, that's even scarier. But, you know, yeah, I mean, your heart's stopping. No bueno. But uh, I hope nothing's wrong, man. Obviously, it'd be very, very crushing for a for a young young Bronny, obviously, right? Just trying to get the his career started. You now going to USC, probably aspirations to go to the NBA. So I hope everything's okay, man. I'd love to see Bronny kill it, you know, because you know it's crazy to say, but like, not many times where like your dad is someone like LeBron James and their kids just potentially are just as good or you know make it to the league, right? It's usually like. The basketball players that maybe weren't good, their dads weren't good, and then obviously their kids are much better than them. You know, like Steph and stuff. You know, the balls, the, the ball brothers. So I don't know. I, I would have loved to see Bronny, you know, do really well. Although I do believe his younger brother, Bryce, I think is going to be the best one, though. 150 out of 150, Cody Thomas. But no, it's a pretty scary situation, man, obviously. Hope everything's okay. But yeah, I mean, it could end. It could end as quickly as it just started if they find something wrong. I mean, I was talking about earlier, like, Sharif O'Neal, obviously, like, you know, Shaq's kid. Again, they ended up having some hard problems and never really got his career started, really, or never continued his career. I think he's still trying, obviously, but they're you know, not really been able to play in college much, and especially at UCLA. Hurt that. Second auto. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. I did go through this already then. Alright, awesome. Alright, next box, guys. Play Kershaw over the Dodgers to 250. And Connor Capel. The 299. Corbin Carroll right there. Jared Walsh to 150. 
Katie says there's room for four to five more for the NBA. Oh, for, for expansion teams? I'm talking about? Damn, that'd be wild. <laughs> that'd be like the biggest sports league, right? Or one of the biggest? Here in the United States, at least. I feel like 32 seems like a lot already. Because obviously there's some very bad franchises out there. You know, that are... are I just feel like if you're going to add those many teams, imagine, like, what have, I mean, look at... There's some teams now in every sport that just are just terrible. Where you feel like you should just get them out of the league. Imagine adding four or five more teams. And obviously they're only at 30 right now, so 32 is perfect, but... I guess they would have to grow the, the playoff bracket, right? They'd have to make it a little bit bigger. I don't know. I kind of wish they had, like, the way over there uh, in Europe they have, like, the the relegations, something like that. I think that would be kind of interesting. Where, like, if the worst teams in the league don't play so well, they get relegated down to the bottom leagues and then some of the teams come up. That'd be pretty cool. Nice. And Tristan Casas. And that is a radiating rookies. Nice one there for the Red Sox and Jeff Thompson. Oh, is that right? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's definitely a lot of cities in the United States. And even Canada, if you want to expand in Canada, obviously, right? You know, Grizzlies were in Vancouver at one point that are worthy of, like, a, a professional sports team like basketball. But I don't know. It's, it's, like I said, there's some struggling, you know, teams already. But obviously, I think if they add Seattle and uh, Vegas, they're going to be set up for success, obviously. Out of 199, Bobby Wood Jr. Seattle obviously now has every sport minus basketball now, basically. So, at least major sports. So, they're definitely doing Vegas, obviously, is upcoming. So, so Vegas, of course, is going to have everything soon. John Lust or Josh Lester for Detroit. Louisville was the home. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Kentucky. Yeah, and the, the, the ABA, right? Or something like that? Yeah, ABA. I think it is. So. I think adding Vegas and, and, uh, and um, Seattle is perfect. But, like, where else can they expand if you really think about it? I mean... Definitely a lot of other bigger cities that can have basketball, I guess. So they get like a San Diego back. Yeah, what if the Clippers just moved to San Diego or something? Let's just do that. Joey Votto. Although I will say though, j Dog. I mean, I'm not a Clippers fan or a Lakers fan anyways, but I will say though, their new arena right there next to the Forum and the SoFi looks very, very nice. And I think it's going to be awesome seeing games there too. It's going to be a shit show down there though with traffic, but obviously Clippers having their own home is going to be pretty good for, for, for entertainment wise, you know? Cal Stevenson. Green Bay? Green Bay can have a basketball team? I can see Louisville for sure, like you just said. Nashville, of course. Nashville's pretty big. They got... Uh, I mean... Well, yeah, no. Tennessee plays in Nashville? The Titans do? Or or where do they play? I forget. There's like two big cities, right, in, in Tennessee, no? But you know how it is, though, J-Dog. Uh, you know, whenever the Lakers have to play over there, uh, it's definitely going to be all Laker fans. <laughs> 100%. Gabriel Moreno. I just love the idea that I can go see my Thunder play there for a lot cheaper, too. Jordan. For the Houston Astros. Jared. Justin.
Oh, okay, so the Titans do play in Nashville. Okay, gotcha. I thought they played in a different city, but... But no, good on Bomber, though, obviously, the owner to just kind of want to leave Staples Center out of the shadows. Obviously, Staples Center or crypto, right? It's always going to be Staples Center, though. It's Laker country, Laker town, and it always will be, no matter what. Unless the Clippers win, like, another 17 championships or win up to 17 championships, then obviously then they can start talking. But but a good for good for him to kind of create his own little arena over there and, you know, get that little fan base started over there. 69 out of 399 Volpe. You know, you don't want to be living in the Lakers' home, right? Playing there, too. Anderson Espinosa. You know, I thought that was funny at first, but, I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, it's like you're playing in someone else's house, really. All right, so good for Balmer to create his own arena. I mean, that's how rich he is. <laughs> and then now you don't have to worry about that. Spencer Torkelson. What am I watching right now, guys? Anybody watching this on ESPN2? Slam ball. I heard this is really growing, though. Looks very fun. Well, this guy's shooting a three. I just thought slam ball would be more just like dunkers. Wow, there you go. Adley Rutschman, four out of 99, ultraviolet. Nice green. Baltimore Orioles. Going to Aaron Billings. There you go, man. Rex, Cardinals pitcher, and the manager dead on top of the soon. She must love that, right? Shakes. When is the breakers delight break? Which one, buddy? One and two were broken earlier today, uh, live at the National, around 11 a.m., so those videos are already uploaded. If you're wanting to know when is number three going off, it won't go off until it's sold out. So once it fills, it breaks. So at some point, we'll put it in the schedule once it's at zero. But if you're looking for one and two, that broke earlier today, and I think those videos have been uploaded. So just got to go to our videos tab on YouTube, and you should be able to see them there. Slam Bell Show on Cartoon Network, too? Wow. I wish I could, man, but no, unfortunately, no. For the most part, I feel like our price is always pretty good, competitive, and, you know, if I gave you a deal for people for buying three spots, then I'd have to probably go give a deal to everybody else that bought three. So, unfortunately, no, man. But thanks for still considering or getting spots with us, though. I appreciate it. Good luck. And then we got Hernandez. Oh, at one point in the past. I hear it is growing, though, that people are investing into it, right? Oh, my God. I can see why. This guy just straight up bounced and dunked over this other guy. Oh, man. They're physical in slam ball. So, like, you can get away with just being really physical, huh? Pitcher hit Ian Hamm, started an argument with Jackson somehow. Didn't see it. Rafael Devers. Two, one, 
Vernon Walker. There you go. I feel like I didn't get. I feel like, did we get all the autos for this one? I feel like we did, but. I guess we did get six autos. All righty, guys. Six more to go. I wonder how often a player gets injured in slam ball. Because you have to think sometimes kind of could twist your ankle or something in the part where it, it turns from that kind of jumper to, to the hardcore, right? Yeah, I didn't realize, Rex, that the Dodgers are playing against the Reds this week, and I think I'm going to go to Sunday's game. It's actually like international, like, Hard day, I think that day with tops, and I think at the Dodgers game they're giving out exclusive tops packs. So I don't know. I started looking into tickets. Fairly cheap because it is a day game, so would love to see Ellie De La Cruz. All right, Ellie De La Cruz got called up that uh, that weekend when they were playing against the Dodgers in Cincinnati. That's pretty cool though. Well, that's probably makes sense why they have like that little, like practice kind of helmet that the NFL players wear now. It just seems like slam ball would be much funner to play than like rugby or something. Michael was like, oh, if you go to the game, tell me, what, tell Vanessa to give me your pack. <laughs> I'm like, man, I might, I might just buy some cheap tickets for like 10 bucks and just, and just, uh, just rack up on these, uh, on these, uh, packs. There's tickets as little as like 10 bucks, I think, or $12. Sit like way up there though, but I probably wouldn't sit there. I just buy the tickets. What the hell is chess boxing? Is it pretty self-explanatory? Like if you like do a great move in chess, you get a punch or something? Don't worry Rex, I'll be there early. A lot of interesting games and sports are starting to come up now. Whoa, shit. Like I did like a windmill dunk, but missed the dunk, but I guess like still got fouled and then the ball actually still went in. Dude, that guy just passed it to himself.
Wow. I would have never known. I actually, honestly, I've never really played chess. I guess maybe more just because I never really knew anybody that plays chess, but. Sorry, Eric. Senator signed the Shank Show? Who's that? Tarasenko? Sanko? Deal specifics. So Tarasenko finally has found a home. I wonder why he wasn't picked up so. I mean, I guess he's a little bit on the older side now, but he's not that old, is he? I think he was a rookie in like 13, 14. But I wonder if it would have maybe money. I'd assume maybe. That makes sense. Yeah, one year five million kind of makes sense because it, it seems like people are probably not wanting to commit to him multi years. I guess. But five million, I guess, is solid. I mean, he's probably on his what tenth year in the league now, ninth. Crazy to say, Kobotar got way more than him, and he's already nearing the end of his career. But Kobotar is obviously a much more valuable piece to to the Kings than, than Tarasenko is probably to most teams. Yeah, I seen Saquon Barkley sign, but it's so funny he signed for only like eight percent more, and I guess squeeze a little bit out of the Giants. But I mean, he can still get franchise tagged again. So I thought that he signed that and wouldn't be able to get franchise tagged again. Whatever, I guess. I'm sure he just didn't want to lose out on $10 million. You know, maybe running backs are being a little underpaid, especially someone like Saquon, but $10 million is $10 million. <laughs> you know, and he's, he still was working on his rookie deal. Although, obviously, him being a high draft pick, he probably made some good money in his rookie deal. But money talks, man. $10 million is going to go a long way for him. Unless he's blowing through it and running out of it, but I assume he's doing okay.
Wow, for what? For the insider training? Trading as the says are? One more box, guys. So, actually, it probably took me a little over an hour and a half. Probably ended up being like an hour and 40. Maybe 45 with a little recap. So, again, I'm glad we got this done, though, a little earlier today. Uh, that way, obviously, we still have time to do another one because it seems like another one might sell right now. We might have to run this back to back. But at least that way we're done. And, uh... With the double headers for the day and then we can focus on you know the jumbos that are half the time if not less than half the time obviously only about 35 minutes or so 30 40 minutes and then obviously breakers the line will be like only 20 minutes 25 tops so so dodgers ended up having a pretty good break in here guys and again I know the Dodgers didn't get much in the first five breaks we did yesterday, but late last night we did case number five of Top Chrome Jumbo and hit pretty well. And so far in this break, it's been hitting well as well. So, again, could be getting those Dodger cases pulled out now. So they are the last team remaining again. Oh, maybe the Spurs owner is also Tottenham? But Eric's saying that might be the owner of Tottenham instead. Six boxes. And Hernandez for the Texas Rangers. Another one there for John. I hate that the camera's adjusting too much right now. It's like freaking out. Hold on one second. It's like buzzing right now. Josh Jung. We got Q Brian Ace. Soto, short print, nice. 
Nice one there for the San Diego Padres going ahead. Oh, that's right. They are called Spurs too, huh? <laughs> Be a little confusing, I guess. MJ Melendez to two ninety nine. Ronald Acuna Jr. Ashcraft. Michael with the Reds. Tyler O'Neill to three fifty. Negative Chris Bryant for the Colorado Rockies. And Tommy Henry to four ninety nine. Michael Grove to three ninety nine. Say fourth box. Yachty to ninety nine. Encarnacion. I don't, not to my knowledge, not a set date at least, but I'm sure you'll hear about it soon whenever they actually have one. Nice, Tristan Casas. Short print, very, image variation. Nice one there for the Red Sox and Jeff. So we have two image variations in this case. Solid, solid. Fordham. Boxes here, guys. Good luck. I 
We got Gabriel Moreno Pulsar to 125. David Villar for the Giants. Giants is Lewis. DJ LeMayu. Yeah, I, I think that's what they're shifting towards, man. Honestly, it's not a bad thing, Rex, because again, how many years has there been where like Topps Chrome in the past had five autos and you're really only like getting one decent one? The rest are kind of just, you know, not the best player rookies in their in their checklist. So. If you're shorting them up, the price will go down a little bit too potentially, but also too maybe it makes more room for potential better autos instead of unloading five. I mean, I don't think people are complaining about like this top scrum jumping down from five to three. You know? Alvarez, nice Volpe to 75. J. Blade for the Marlins. Michael P. Solid release that's about a month away. Gives people a little time to save up for some of that. I could also see him get it pushed back for another week or two. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Jordan Grochans. Yeah, well, you know, if people, people want the price to be you know, dollar packs again. <laughs> I don't think a price will ever, ever uh, make any customer happy. Cause imagine, okay, think about it. If it's too cheap, everybody's gonna buy it and sell it out. And then what happens? Supply and demand happens, right? Well, I'm the only guy that has a few cases left. So I'm gonna raise the price to this much. And if you really want it, you're gonna have to buy it, you know? So I don't know. I think they would be changing a lot more if people just would stop buying, right? But people are okay with buying it at this price, obviously, so it's not that terrible. It's just always the same people yapping, really. If it was just so bad, obviously people wouldn't be buying it. All right, here we go, guys. So a little hit recap really quick. So we'll do the autos. Blade, Villard, Encarnacion from Miami. Henry for uh, Arizona, Ashcraft for the Reds, Hernandez, color to 199 for the Rangers, and then there's a base Rangers hit of his, Espinosa, um, to 250 for the Padres, a little relic there of Jordan, Stevenson for the A's, Lester for Detroit, 
Okay, Palo to a 299 purple speckle for the A's. Thomas for the A's, blue. Refractor auto, another relic there. Rizzo for the Yankees, Steel for the Cubs. Corey Lee for Houston, Espinosa again there for their, the Padres, Peguero for the Pirates, Waters for Kansas City, Togler for the Rockies, and Langleers for the A's. Jared Schuster there for the Atlanta Braves. And let's save these last two autos there. So we also had a very nice Gunnar Henderson numbered card as well, as well as a Technicolor Gunnar Henderson and then a Tristan Costas Radiating Rookies. But a nice Volpe right there as well. Numbered card, we had a short print Juan Soto as well as Casas, Volpe color to 75. You got Drew Waters auto there. And then of course you had an ultraviolet Freddie Freeman. You had an ultraviolet Adley Rutschman to 99. And of course you had a James Altman to 199 for the Dodgers. Corbin Carroll to 499 and a Volpe to 150 blue. So very, very solid case right here, guys. Again, another one down to one left. Last spot Mojo Dodgers. Someone wants to take it and we can run that back, guys. Appreciate it, jazbeescasebreaks.com.